instead of fighting, we need to feed each other, we need to serve each other. So, do you have some questions? Or comments, yes. I love to hear uh, what I wanted to, uh, that women are um, uh, the ambassadors of peace. So I just wanted to ask that what can we do to convince men in the world that we are the ambassadors of peace and who we can bring men on the table with this uh, point that she has just made. Um, this is my real conviction and the fear that we are facing in this whole world uh, having wars everywhere and women being victim, women and children being victim of war sexually and physically and in so many ways. Um, sometimes women are pregnant and uh, having small young babies with them and uh, they are suffering from uh, this quality of the men making decisions, uh, having war on a political level or religious level or whatever. So this is my point, this is my question, that what can we do, uh, how we can bring men on the table with this uh, topic so that we can change the world. for your question. First of all, you heard me read two comments that these young men gave to me to take to the conference. So here are two men who wanted to participate in this conference, who thought it was important, and who also explained clearly that women have a special role that the men cannot take. So I think that answers your question. This, the, the second point is that I want to turn it around. Working on this beforehand, I said, one of the things is that these peace negotiations are always between men. It's always men doing the peace negotiations. And if the, they have to bring women, I know from the 80s when I lived in Africa, and they bring their girlfriends just to fill up the quota for them, that has to change. So the women in Africa have to be very, very severe on this and say, you're not going to bring your girlfriends. There must be true representation of the women to be involved in these negotiations. That's one thing. It wasn't 15 years ago that when women raised their hand to speak, you could visibly see the men leading the room. Now they are staying, they're listening. Of course, sometimes it's a pressure. I mean, they're afraid to leave, maybe. But nevertheless, if they listen, they can, they can hear um, exactly what you were saying. Yeah. Um, yeah, what I had to say was really similar to what's just been brought up. I think something that I wrote down during that, those incredible presentations was 
whose responsibility is it? And you speak about patriarchy, but really it's a system created by men, men benefit from it. And I think in regards to the point that you made, Carolyn, about women having to respect men and remind men of their role, I think it's interesting when we talk about toxic femininity, because is that not just repercussions of the patriarchy? And really and truly, I agree that the responsibility, I believe, has to fall on men, because without men being in spaces like this and listening to these conversations, we won't get anywhere, because we know that women are the foundations of building peace. So I don't know how much responsibility it is on us. I think men need to be part of this conversation more and more. Um, <coughs> respect women and treat women equally have been taught that by their mother. And inversely, they've been taught, they've taught their children, their male children, to not respect women because they don't respect themselves or they don't have dignity themselves or they haven't taken that role in the family. So I, I, one of the reasons I really respect Women's Federation is because we try to educate women, their dignity, their role. And as mothers, they have a huge influence on men. They have to be taught. You can't bring a 50-year-old man to this program and expect him to change. I mean, I'm sorry. My husband is not going to change. <laughs> right? Any of you know him? He's an Italian. <laughs> take a certain role with him, otherwise he'll never listen to me. He doesn't listen to me because I'm his partner, honestly. He listens because I obey, I serve, I listen, I listen, and I prove myself over many, many years. But that can change if we teach them when they're young by the mother. to a man leader 
and we respect. But many times in society, we see a woman leader, and she's not respected what we do. And many times, it starts from us. So we have to unite all sisters and really support each other in all situations. And like this, we can bring more peace because we start with our own example. Hello. My subject is consciousness, and in fact, science still knows very little about consciousness. But we have a thinking mind consciousness, and we have a feeling heart consciousness. And women are closer to their heart consciousness. And this gives us a direct connection to spirit and we operate on an intuitive level. Now, most women don't honor their intuitive consciousness because it's not talked about in psychology, in great circles, um, and it's not recognized. But if women can re retain and maintain their consciousness, they stand in their power, not power over, but power to do things from their hearts. So I think it starts from us women acknowledging that, recognizing it and living like that, even though it's not recognized in science. Because then man can come into a new consciousness because we established again our heart consciousness. Yes, I want to talk about um, peace. I believe that we are all here talking about pursuing a world of peace. But I believe peace begins from within. As an individual, we need to make the choice to be peaceful. Peaceful in yourself. You cannot give what you don't have. So we have to try, make it a, a way to find peace within. Then you can now look outside, respecting each one of us in here, loving your neighbor, loving your environment, building your family, then you can talk about peace out there. So I encourage each and every one of us here today to start by building internal peace. Then from there, you will move outside. Thank you. I want to address to um, Mrs. Carol Henshin's uh, presentation. There was a um, strike uh, last week in Iceland. It was, I don't know if you noticed, uh, all women went on strike uh, for gender equality. Even the prime minister, she joined. And um, uh, they were somehow writing in newspaper that Iceland is uh, country number one in gender equality. And uh, my husband, he's from Iceland, so he commented on this. And he said, I have anything against that women are fighting for their rights, but I didn't like when they came with the slogan, a way with patriarchy. This is something what touched him and he didn't like it. And I told him, you know, in Women's Federation, we are uh, teaching, uh, we, are, we are teaching women and also ourselves how to cooperate with men. Uh, not to push them away, but then to cooperate. And he said, yeah, please come and teach women in Iceland. <laughs> Women's Federation, come and please teach this topic so we are invited maybe next year. Dear sisters, dear ladies, dear gentlemen, uh, we are in the middle of discussion, but we don't know this. We can continue in the next room. The coffee and snacks, beverages are waiting for you, and you can continue to invite us. Thank you.